Well, he hasn't told me anything. Oh, so awesome. so new counters have been filed in the press and explain their hopes and wishes and experiences. Oh, you don't want to hear those. <laughs> I'd like to call the meeting to order. Thank you all for coming. Welcome to our first inaugural meeting of the brand new council in 2018. And at, uh, I'd like to uh, call Pastor Rob Belfort to bring the opening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for this invitation to be here with you. And uh, hello to everyone else and councillors. Um, it is so good to be here. And I would also like to re reiterate exactly what I said last time. You really do need a larger meeting room, as uh, <laughs> the crowd here can attest. October 24th, 2018 was a very, very important day for the city of Steinbeck because it was my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and the city of Steinbeck decided to work all together and pool its resources to provide for me um, a gift of a brand new mayor. And as the old saying is, uh, make or get new counselors, keep the old. One is silver and the other is gold. That also happened on my birthday. Um, but with all joking aside, I, and at risk of sounding like one of those people who say those kinds of things, I am extremely blessed, pleased and happy for the results of the recent election. And so I do want to welcome you all as a citizen of this city to your roles in this city in leading and serving us as our city council. I really love Steinbeck. And as you can tell from my last name being Belfour, I'm a bit yawn seed. I'm all the way yawn over from BC where I was born and raised, which might explain some of the things I say. So just say, you know, he's a, a recent arrival to our town and have grace on me for all these things. But I really love Steinbeck. I've loved moving here and um, it's not like I just love the fact that there's all these buildings in the middle of endless prairie. When people say we love Steinbeck, it's because you love the people of Steinbeck. That's what here. That's what's here, is people. And that's what makes our city a wonderful place to be. And I genuinely mean that. A couple of things that just come to mind. Um, it, it's rare, I think, for any city to be named the cleanest city in North America, which Steinbeck has been awarded twice. I know whoever was doing the testing on that didn't see my kid's toy room at 4.30 in the afternoon, but somehow we squeaked through on that. But um, one of the reasons why I think that keeps happening, that that award is given to our city, is because of things like Pick Up and Walk, where our entire city bands together to just go through and collect a winter's worth of trash everywhere we can find it, and it makes a huge difference. But that just doesn't happen. And it's not even something that can just happen by a bunch of people deciding it should happen. It's what happens when a city cares about itself, when people are willing to invest the time for this kind of thing. I love that about our city. And I also love about our city that we're a city that cares and is growing with the time. Um, one of the people that we work with in our church um, has invested a lot of time in the last little bit in trying to connect with some of the newcomers to our city. And recently has been offered a position to do the same thing she was doing, but in Winnipeg. And just said to me in a throwaway comment, wow, the people in Steinbeck are getting so much better care, are, are so much more cared for, so much more connected, people who have maybe come here from Syria recently or something like that. And again, that isn't something that just happens because somebody decides it's, it should. It's what happens when people care, and when people are ready to invest their lives in each other. So I really do, love the city, I love being a part of it, and I'm really grateful for all that is happening here. You're our new elected government. And I just want to share a few words from scripture to remind us that government is God's idea. First of all, God himself considers himself in government. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as many people do, because it's true. And the Lord Jesus Christ, we call him that because he is in government. He's a Lord, and he rules. And he has decided that we, as his image bearers, should have government on the earth and should imitate his rule in the world by having an authority that is meant for good. 
in a world that tends towards not good if things are left on their own. Everybody knows why we have bylaws about keeping the weeds down when you have no lawn, because if you just leave that dirt there, eventually it just becomes weeds which spread into other people's yards, and then all of a sudden you are a dandelion farmer with no market, which is a problem. We need government, good government, in order to help this city continue to be a place where people love each other with action and deed. And so the Apostle Paul writing in Romans chapter 13 says this, let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities, resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment for rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who's in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. And if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to him, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, and honor to whom honor is owed. Now I know that technically nobody here is going to bear the sword, literally, and that's probably a good thing. But you can hear in this, these scriptures the call for everyone to do their part for governors to gov govern well, wanting to reward those who want to contribute good to their area and to lead by example by doing that, as well as the call for all of us as citizens to respect and honor and do our part to the proper functioning of a city, which is what I hope we are all ready and willing to do as well. As I prepared these remarks, there was really just one word that I wanted to pray, if I may, over the city council, and that is the word courage. And my hope is that you will be a courageous city council. I know many of you long for wisdom, but wisdom doesn't do us any good if you don't have the courage to back it up. I know that many of you long for integrity and to see uh, your visions for the city come to fruition, but they won't happen in a good way unless you're courageous enough to stand by your convictions, the good ones, to see things through with patience. And so this is my big prayer for our city council is that you would be courageous as you serve and lead us. And so with that being said, may I pray for our city and for you. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray that you would, by grace and as a gift, just bless our leaders who we have elected and entrusted with authority, which is a really weighty thing to be the keepers of our laws in this city. I pray, Father, as, as I know each one around this table before us longs to do good, wants to do good, I pray that you would grant them the wisdom and the grace and the thoughtfulness and the patience to see their best intentions fulfilled. But in the midst of this, Lord, in a changing world, I pray that you would grant them great courage, that they would have steady and strong hearts, to not only know what the right thing to do is, but to persevere in doing it for the sake of this responsibility they've been given for the city of Steinbeck. And by grace upon grace, King Jesus, would you bless each and every one of us for your glory. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Rob. And we'll go to uh, point number three, the oath of office. And I'll turn that over, this over to the uh, city manager for, uh, for uh, introduction. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, the municipal act uh, does require uh, an oath of office be completed by each member of council uh, at the beginning of their term. Uh, you have found copies of that uh, oath of office in your agenda package. Uh, there is also specific oaths of office that are uh, on the black table uh, before uh, the council table. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if uh, you are ready per to proceed, I would uh, ask for you to come forward as well as uh, I will ask individual members of council one by one to come forward uh, and it will be a self-administration of the oath. Council Susan Penner, please. I'm a Canadian citizen, that I'm of the full age of 18, 
18 years, that I'm an elector of the city of Steinbeck, that I am not disqualified under any provision of the Municipal Act or any other act of legislature from being a member of the city council of the city of Steinbeck, that I will act faithfully in the office of counselor without fear, favor, or affection, and will truly, faithfully, and impartially and to the best of my knowledge and ability, execute the duties and responsibilities of that office. And I make this solemn declaration, conscientiously believing it to be true, and knowing that it is of the same force and effect as if made under oath, and by virtue of the Canada Evidence Act.
solemnly declare that I am a Canadian citizen, that I am of the full age of 18 years, that I am an elector of the city of Steinbeck, that I am not disqualified under any provision of the Municipal Act or any other act of the Legislature from being a member of the Council of the City of Steinbeck, that I will act faithfully in the office of Councillor without fear, favour or affection, and will truly, faithfully and impartially, and to the best of my knowledge and ability, execute the duties and responsibilities of that office. And I make this solemn declaration, conscientiously believing it to be true, and knowing that it is of the same force and effect as if made under oath, and by virtue of the Canada Evidence Act. Okay, number four in the agenda, page, uh, that is the disclosure of personal interest, page two. Um, I'll just refer to uh, city manager to introduce that. Uh, this is uh, a requirement uh, also of the Municipal Act uh, that uh, at the beginning of each term, uh, by November 30th, each member of council must uh, complete this declaration uh, of, uh, of assets. Um, and uh, have that available for review by the public should the public uh, inquire. Uh, but uh, this document, uh, we do request that council complete it and have it submitted to the office by the end of November. Okay, council, that's a uh, requirement by law for us to fill, fill out. And I just ask that you hand that to Deb by, uh, by the end of the November. And we'll go to number five. Uh, bylaw 1999, conflict of interest policy and code of conduct for members of council for the city of Steinbeck. Once again, that's on page three, and I'd like to uh, turn that over to uh, city administration for uh, introduction. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, the city's code of conduct bylaw 1999 uh, was passed by city council in 2012 pursuant to requirements of the municipal act. 
Uh, it does include the bylaw as well as a code of conduct policy and conflict of interest policy that, uh, that follows. Uh, there is also uh, in Council's agenda package a, uh, a statement, uh, an oath of understanding found on page 10. Uh, administration is also uh, requiring that uh, each council member complete uh, two original copies uh, again uh, by the end of November and submit one completed copy indicating their understanding with the uh, code of conduct policy and bylaw uh, to uh, administration. Okay. Thank you, Council. If you have, uh, I trust you've read that and signed the, uh, the understanding. But if, uh, if you have not, please have that done and also hand that in to Deb by the end of November. Uh, on page number seven, voluntary declaration of the city of a city manager. Uh, that gives a good example of how we should be filling out our, uh, our disclosure of personal interest. Now we'll go to number eight, the appointment of deputy mayor. Um, I will uh, be appointing Councillor Michael Swakestra as deputy Number nine, the appointment uh, of the City Council Representative to JCAP Library Board. That will be Damian Penner, Council Damian Penner. The, uh, then we we'll go to number 10, the appointment of City Council Representative to St. Red River Conservation District. That will be Councilor Jake Hebert. Appointment of City Council Representative to, okay, oh, to the uh, number 11, appointment of City Council represent to Steinbach Community Development Corp. That will be Susan Penner, and she will be joined with Keith Unger, Jack Kaler, and Troy Workentine. Uh, number 12, the appointment of the Steinbach and RM of Hanover Joint Action Committee. That will be Councillor Jake Siemens. Number 13, the appointment of the Steinbach RM of the Brokery Joint Action Committee. That will be Councillor Bill Hebert. And um, the, uh, the RCMP Advisory Board will be moving uh, Councillor Michael Swagster to the chair position of that. And on number 14, the appointment of citizen representative to the JCAP Library Board. There's two citizens, two uh, appointment, uh, I guess terms that are, are lapsing. And I'll be appointing Allison Duick and Jackie Brisky to those positions. And uh, so now what I'm asking for is a motion to approve the appointments made by the mayor. Um, a motion by Mr. Susan Chapman. Penner Second. and Councillor Michael Swagstra. Uh, call for the question. Oh, okay, all those in favor, sorry. They're carried. Okay, we need a resolution number 15 for the bank authorization. Uh, Mr. Warkentine, would you like to introduce that, please? Uh, briefly, uh, there are two resolutions. This uh, particular one deals with uh, bank authorization uh, with respect to uh, the, uh, the funds that the city has on account and uh, general banking uh, activities uh, that the city conducts with the Royal Bank of Canada. Uh, the uh, resolution is found on page 12, requesting uh, Council's consideration uh, to approve that by resolution. Okay, Council, I need a resolution for that. Uh, Councilor Jake Siemens. Motion approved. Okay. Second by Councilor Bill Hebert. Any comments? Uh, we would like to spend money as a council. We work that we approve. Okay. Anything further? Okay. Any other comments from council? Seeing none. Ask for the question. All in favor? Carried. Okay, number 16, we need a resolution for the signing authority. That's on page 14 in your package. Uh, Mr. Workentine, could you please introduce this? Uh, just generally, this uh, is a companion document to the uh, banking resolution. Uh, this further uh, identifies uh, and authorizes uh, specific individuals as listed in the resolution uh, to be uh, approved for, uh, for signing documents, etc., uh, on behalf of the City of Steinbeck. Recommendation is for Council to approve. Okay, Council, I need a motion to approve. Uh, Councillor Michael Swagstra, second by Councillor Damon Penny, Penner. 
Any comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This will enable us to access those funds that Councillor Siemens wishes to spend, so <laughs> we need to... <laughs> Anything further? further? Any other comments of Council? Okay, seeing none, call for the question. All in favor? Carried. Okay, now I get to the, uh, the fun part of the evening. I want to invite all of you, friends and family that have come today, for a reception in our, uh, in our atrium right after this. And I'm asking for one more resolution of council number 17. I need a resolution to adjourn. Uh, Councilor Dame, uh, moved by Councilman Dame, Damon Penner. Second by Councilor Michael Swagstra. Any comments? That food smells good, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Gary. Do we, have, do we have to hammer this one?